Thank you, Roger Pan, for once again, as you always do, for setting the perfect tone for Supper Song and Prayer, COVID edition. And welcome to everybody. I was just moments before we all came in here to start preparing for this, I was asked once again on the telephone, what are the plans for reopening the church? First, I would like to acknowledge the beauty and optimism of the question. But sadly, 
The optimism and good news ends with the question because the truthful answer is there is no schedule whatever for reopening Epiphany for normal services, nor is there for any Episcopal church in the Diocese of Nevada. And you know all the reasons why, and I'm sure there's a variation of opinion on this, but the Episcopal church means the church of a bishop, and we're taking the very cautious decision to let um, the churches all remain closed until there's at least a 14-day steady decline in new cases, at which point only then will the rector of the parish, maybe with the guidance of the vestry, come up with an exact plan about what reopening will look like, which just so you're forewarned, because that makes you forearmed, that's very likely to be without congregational singing for quite some time, because the exact, what is it, that's a propellant, singing is way different than breathing in terms of how much we push out potential virus. So even when that day comes, the service will not look like it did the previous January. But God is good. We are here now, and we're ready to worship. Before we do, I would like to thank in advance Miss Laura Cannon, who only minutes from now will be bringing a wonderful message, and to thank even further in advance Miss Judy Watts, who will, who will be our speaker one week from today, Brian Morgan the week following, and Father Vince O'Neill three weeks from tonight. And so if you could keep those future speakers, including the future 10-minute speaker from now, Laura Cannon, in your prayers and good wishes, it's nothing but a win-win for everybody. Shall we have our first song? And that is tonight. For those of you who have a hymnal at home, it's number 488, Be Thou My Vision, right? And we'll be doing the first and the third verse. And look, the huge congregation gathered here of seven people who are not only six, but more like 16 feet apart from one another have stood to sing, ah, rejoice my Christian heart. <laughs> Be Thou My Vision. Contemplating a full dropout for an acapella finish. Was that my imagination? It was in the air. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let's pray together the long, full version of the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right. If I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life, and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. I have a little bit of quick theology 
of prayer. This prayer that we just prayed has one huge, were it to be a written paragraph that an English teacher would look at, the sentence that begins living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, and then goes on for about 55 words with about nine commas and maybe 12 commas is a run-on sentence. And in fact, it's a, a run-on fragment because I don't think there's a clear subject verb. But I lift this up to you as not a poor, poorly written prayer, but actually one that might be, might provide a clue of how it is that we can speak to God. God does not require normal composition forms. If we want to pray to God 20 clauses in a row, God will hear it as this prayer understands. So if there's just a little invitation here from this beautiful prayer, it's to let spirit guide your prayers and not be bogged down or burdened by a sense of linguistic rule. Know that your God hears perfectly in all ways at all times. Amen. Sermon over. <laughs> the psalm tonight is number 90. It's found on page 718 in the Book of Common Prayer. We're doing a portion of Psalm 90, verses 13 through 17, and we'll say it aloud responsively by half verse. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious, gracious to your servants. Satisfy, satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us. And the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works. And, and your splendor to their, their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, I like giving full credit where credit's due. Um, I, I, Roger and I were talking about upcoming speakers a while back, and he said, how about Laura Cannon? I said, I think I asked her, but she said no. And Roger said, well, me. And Roger's more polite than the average person. I gotta say, I love manners and I love politeness. This guy, he sets the bars. He's an inspiration, right? Peter Steinbrenner, who's what, 11 inches taller than I am? Just put the Roger Pan politeness bar up here, like at eight feet. <laughs> so true. So, and maybe it's that politeness or good salesmanship, but he asked Laura and she agreed and we are all grateful. I'd like to say a few extra things about Laura and the many gifts she brings to Epiphany. She's a former uh, vestry member, which is a Pisco speak for board member and served three wonderful years. And also Laura and I uh, co-host the weekly Centering Prayer Service, which I will also give a quick word of uh, endorsement to. It's Thursday nights at 7. We're meeting during these COVID times virtually on Zoom, and it's been a very regular and wonderful thing. And I believe I'm speaking for Laura and myself when I say you're welcome to join us at any time. Laura's creative. She's God-seeking, God -seeking, and I'm looking forward to her words. Will you help me welcome, please, with love, Miss Laura Cannon. the microphone before I leave. Laura walking to the podium said it was six years in the vestry and for those who have served on a vestry knows that that is a huge difference and those extra three years definitely need to be acknowledged. So double thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Laura Cannon. Um, just to give you a quick background, um, I was baptized as an adult, as a Presbyterian. Um, I came to Epiphany, it was about eight years ago. 
uh, it was when we were over at the Pecos location. Um, and as has been said, I was on Vestry. I've also been involved in another, a number of other ministries, coffee hour, and um, just many. <laughs> Um, what I want to talk about today is how God speaks to me. I think we all have a particular way in which God speaks to us. Uh, many people, for instance, find God in nature, the natural world. For me, I find God, or the most pleasurable perception of God, in words. This includes the liturgy, of course, but also words of prayer. The first example of this I want to tell you about is related to the practice of centering prayer and meditation. Part of this is what is known as the prayer of loving kindness. It's derived from Buddhist tradition. And the prayer of loving kindness is, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free from fear, may you be at peace. There are differences in different words sometimes, but this is the one I use. And saying this prayer, you direct your attention towards first yourself, then someone who is a friend, you repeat it multiple times as you, as you think of this person. And then when you're ready, you move on, you, you think of someone who is a stranger to you, someone you may briefly see but don't really know, a person at the supermarket or something like that. And when you have finished praying for them, then you pray for someone you don't like. And from there, you can move on to simply praying for everybody in the world at, around you. Um, now, I have a bit of a cynical side, so when I, I first read about this, I couldn't really see myself doing it, but I did. And it had amazing and profound consequences for me. Um, and the per when I chose to pray about the person I disliked, it was a co-worker, and I would say this person, you know how you dislike someone, but you don't really hate them, but they just get on your nerves. It was kind of like that. And maybe the more you see them, the more they get on your nerves a little bit. So, but I prayed the prayer of loving kindness towards him. And, you know, I don't know if it's going out into the universe, but I know it did change me because when I saw that person later, he he was a person and he wasn't this person who got on my nerves. He was I really saw him and I was I said hi and I was glad to see him. And he could see from the way I was greeting him that I was glad to see him. So it made a difference in our relationship. And just noticing that and just seeing that, um, changed my perception of everything, including the way people relate to each other during the day. Um, having done this, I have found that the prayer of loving kindness is of great benefit to me in times of stress. And what I, what I started to do is I would go to a park and I would walk slowly, very slowly. People would pass me, you know, dogs and skateboards, that was okay, everyone would pass me. I would walk very slowly, breathing, and I would pray the prayer of loving kindness towards everybody and everything that I encountered. People walking dogs, people in airplanes flying overhead, construction workers building apartments, the people who were going to live in those apartments. Uh, if there were no people around, I would pray for the trees, butterflies, the fish and the water, whatever. Whatever was there that I could pray for. And I would also, from time to time, pray for myself because that's part of the tradition. Mm -hmm. And doing this enabled me to get out of my own stress and fear. It was, it was an amazing experience in which you really feel like you're part of the world and also part of God. Um, and that gave me courage. Being able to break out of stress and fear gave me courage. And I know there are times when I could not have gotten through things in my life without knowing that I had that practice and that was something I could go back to. Second example I want to give you is found in the Book of Common Prayer. I usually say the morning prayer every day. And one of the readings is known as the Song of the Three Young Men or the Song of Creation. It's based on Psalm 148 and, and parts of the Book of Daniel. 
And it's quite simply a list of all things on earth praising God. First, the cosmic order, the sun and the moon, the stars of heaven, showers and dew, winds of God, fire and heat, winter and summer, dews and frosts, frost and cold, ice and snow, nights and days, light and darkness, lightnings and clouds. There is never a day where you can't look outside and see something on this list. It may be fire and heat, it may be winds, it may be showers occasionally, it may even be occasionally be frost and cold, but it's, it's for any season at all times. Then we have the creatures of the earth, the mountains and the hills, the green things upon the earth, wells, seas and floods, whales and all that move in the waters. That's, that's my favorite line. Fowls of the air, beasts and cattle, and yes, children of men. People of God, priests of the Lord, servants of the Lord, spirits and souls of the righteous, holy and humble men of heart. When I finish this prayer, I feel that all is right with the world, even when it may not seem it is. God is in charge and we are part of the order of things. These two prayers are very close and very dear parts of my faith, and I hope that they may also be a benefit to you. Amen. Oh, Laura, excellent job. Before you get farther away, could I have those glasses, please? Particularly important because when we get to I'll Fly Away, it's like four font. <laughs> it's not a complaint, it's just a statement of fact. <laughs> but I'll, I will need these. That was wonderful. The prayer of loving kindness, right? Really nice one, that's great. And also, as I listened to you, I wondered, did I ever know that that prayer was partially from Daniel? And as forgetful as I am, I think the answer is, no, I never did. So thank you for that uh, learning. I looked it up on Wikipedia. Excellent. <laughs> it is an amazing prayer, so thank you for that. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace as we seek God, live Christ, and share the Spirit. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Well done. I'll fly away.
Thank you, Peter, Roger, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for the next Epiphany broadcast of the live stream. Good night.